this is Karen Smith uh, with Karen Smith Fine Art and I wanted to uh, walk you through a new painting I just did today. Um, I call it Liquid Rainbow 2 because I have a Liquid Rainbow 1 that I did um, well, some time ago. So this is my, um, all my paints are going to be pre-mixed that, um, that I have in four containers. And this is my Latex House Paint Bright White semi-gloss and it's mixed with a medium of 70% Elmer's glue wall and a 30% water. So I miss, miss those two and then I mix 50% paint and 50% of my medium into my containers and then I'll adjust with a little bit of water for, to get the consistency right and I started actually pre-adding some silicone into my pre-mixes. Um, so that's a pretty large container. That's a quart. So I think I put about seven drops of... I'm trying to remember which silicone I use because I have quite a few ones. I believe that was the coconut milk hair serum that I was using in that. Um, the paints that I use are all by... Oh, what's it called again? <laughs> I totally forgot the name of the paint brand that I use. Creative, creative, something. There it is. Creative inspiration. Um, I really love these paints. So that's the Dioxetine Purple. I love them because they're really smooth, creamy, and uh, rich with color. So. They work great. Okay, so that's my mixture of the purple with my medium. And I'm holding it up pretty high. And I'm not using like a hard steady stream. I'm using like a soft stream of paint so it kind of drips out kind of fast. And I wanted to hold it up high so that it kind of sunk down into the white paint. And I believe that is my quad <laughs> quadrazone rose quadradrone rose um it's a really nice it's a pink but it's got a hint I'd say a real hint of orange in it so it has almost a dark salmon color i really like this stuff and i'm just randomly i'm going to mostly have the pink colors in the center but i'm spreading them out just a little bit and i believe this is my deep yellow yes Yes, deep yellow, pre-mixed, again with the medium. And when I say I use 50% medium and 50% paint, again, um, I, I actually will f almost fill those containers, not quite, about 7 eighths full, then pour all the mixture out into a large container and adjust the consistency and then pour it back into the container because I want all my paints to have the same consistency because I wasn't doing that before and I was getting different consistencies. So that is my Cerulean Blue. Love that real pretty color. Um, but yeah, so some paints, like yellow's a really wonky color. You gotta be careful um, to really check your consistency with yellow. I tend to put less medium in my yellow because it tends to get for some reason thinner even though the ratio is the same it has it must have something to do with the pigmentation and that's not just not in this brand I find that consistent and I believe that's my Viridian green yes um, that's a new color I just got um, love it absolutely love it it's, it's uh, really cool color because it it's a pretty deep green with a blue undertone to it. So as it lightens up when you mix it with white, for example, um, it's got this gorgeous, I want to say almost uh, teal. Yeah, it's, it's really almost like a teal, but it's very um, intense color. So as it lightens up, it's got this bluish teal with the green kind of cast to it. All right, so actually I was just winging it. I didn't have a plan. 
I like to paint intuitively most of the time, but with the pour paint, I usually kind of have an idea which way I'm going with it, at least technique wise. But you know what? I was just like, I think too much. Just going to throw down some paint and just kind of whatever strikes me, I'm just going to do it. So I'm just playing with the tilting. And I'm really kind of letting the way the, the paint works dictate how I'm going to continue going with it. Um, sometimes when I do pour painting, I let the paint just run off the edges because I want to like do a lot of stretching, like really stretch it out. And sometimes I'll catch the paint. As you can see, I'm catching on the side with my hands. My hands are paint catchers. Um, or you can use, you know, cardboard or, you know, pretty much whatever you want to have a makeshift paint catcher, but sometimes I just use my hands. And I'm wearing my gloves today. A lot of times I use a liquid hand protector. It's like a liquid glove. But I knew I was going to be coated <laughs> with um, some heavy paint um, because of the types of pores I wanted to work on today. So I figured, you know what, I'm going to go with the gloves today. So like I said, it's starting to stretch out. You can see how the, the texture and the shapes are changing. and some cells are starting to pop up so that's when I kind of start thinking well should I go to the left to the right on an angle um, so just sometimes you just got a freestyle so to speak and um, yeah just watch what your paints do and don't always be worried about well, I got to get this corner and I got to get that corner and I got to get this look at your composition as you're working and sometimes it's good to just not even look and just start tilting away and let it the paint do it, what it wants to do. But like I said, you can always use your um, overflow, your drippings, to uh, get to use and put on your corners and your sides. Um, you know, I, I know that depends on what kind of technique you're using and what kind of effect you're looking for in the end, but. If you're just kind of freestyling it, don't get hung up on your corners. I know I say that in other videos, but don't let your covering of your canvas of paint dictate your composition. Maintain the composition you want. Because I've done that. I've sacrificed some some work. I was like, ah, i got to keep tilting this because I really need to... And I ended up losing some stuff on there I wish I hadn't. So I'm trying to be more careful about always having to go for the corners. In fact, um, I might not have done it on this painting. Nope, I did it on a different painting where I dipped all four sides. That's right, I had uh, overflow um, drippings from this painting. And when I worked on the next one, I dipped all four of my sides in the drippings first. And then... Um, I actually flip, flipped it and did a did an impression into the paint with it, like a reverse dip. So this was pretty cool. I had never done this before. This I've dripped the paint into the white before, but ended up going a completely different direction with it. A literally different technique. But as I was watching the paint morph. I was like, ooh, this, I don't know, it reminds me of Mardi Gras. It looks like confetti and streamers. So that was really cool how there was more cells up at the top. <clears throat> Unless at the bottom, so it has a nice gradated look to it. So that was just, was just kind of a, a fun, I mean, it literally looks like streamers. I've been really happy with the, the uh, Elmer's glue wall. 70% with 30% water because I'm, I'm a big fan of Floetron that's pretty much all I've been using that and you know a little bit of silicone water but I was like you know what oh that's what it was I went to the to the Home Depot and they were out of Floetron and I usually get it in the big gallon they didn't have any sizes left so they had an, interestingly a big display of these gallon size armor uh, Elmer glue on. So I'm like, that's such a weird coincidence because the display was right 
I walked right by it as I was going down the aisle where the flow troll was supposed to be. So I was like, well, this must be something telling me to try the glue. <laughs> so I'm still going to use flow troll, but I like to bounce around and also maybe combine the flow troll with <laughs> the glue and the water. <clears throat> and do a, do that, you know, use all of them. So I thought it was good that I kind of stuck out of my, branched out of my norm. But I've been super happy with the glue a lot, actually. So, let's see, what am I doing next? I was thinking about doing a balloon smash. <laughs> Instead, I was like, I gotta use my hand. I'm wearing a glove. And this is typically how I work. Like, I thought it was a pretty cool painting. I didn't have, like, okay, you don't have to do anything else. Maybe play with the tilting a little more, or whatever. <clears throat> but I just like to experiment, play with the paint more, but without necessarily tilting it more, and just start, you know, balloon smashing, or do another small pour on, on top of your other pour, or whatever. Sometimes you'll do stuff and be like, why did I do that? But I just don't want to get stuck in a rut. And I don't mean this as an insult to anybody. This is just how I, my brain it won't shut up thinks. I just don't want my work to look like, I don't want to say like everybody else's, but like the technique in of itself. Like, oh, everybody's doing that. And... Sometimes you can't tell one person's work from another. I mean, it can, excellent work. I'm not knocking the work. But sometimes because it's just the technique in and of itself that's being done. So I'm afraid to get stuck in, in, a, in that place. That's just, this is how I work. It's just me. But I was keeping it more conservative and safe <clears throat> when I first started learning pore painting because it, it does take a, a, quite a while to get your your recipe where you want it, but you don't ever really stick with it. You still tweak it, and I shouldn't say not ever stick with it. But a lot of times you'll be like, well, let me try this. Yeah, I'm happy with it, but I just want to see what this does. So it's good to experiment. Um, I get bored really easy with everything I do in my life, so I have to... I don't know, it's just my nature to want to do more. And then I, I just start getting to a place where, okay, as I'm working on it, I'm like, nope, I'm good. So I, I usually know. It just clicks. Because I thought it was pretty cool looking, just as it was, but I was like, oh, I really want to do more with this. But still keep a lot of the original textures that were developed and just use, um, you know, the rules of third is an expression for um, composition. It's when you're not centered. So, for example, I'm making this balloon smash kind of flowery looking thing. I didn't do it in the middle. I did it off, you know, to the left or the right. In this case, I did it to the right. But I'm not going all the way over to the edge of the canvas. And I'm not just doing it slightly to the right. I'm doing it in the third quadrant of the painting. So if you broke this painting into th three sections, three even sections, and you pick either your first third in this into three even sections, right? So you have your first third, your middle, and then your third third, your last third. Or you can say left, center, right. But anyhow, so this is the right third of the canvas so there's a the term rules of third it's just an aesthetic that us humans find pleasing to the eye for balance <clears throat> and it doesn't have it could be up it could have been up not in the middle I could have gone on the third quadrant and gone up high or low but within the third quadrant and whether you use your first or your last third and this applies to no matter what size your cabinets is. Break it into thirds 
and it really and it, it's great to use um to center stuff too I'm, I'm not against centering at all it's just if you want to go off center for a focal point I would suggest using your rules of third it really helps um, balance um, I used to do a lot of photography I love photography um, outdoor photography and um, that was something um, the rules of third term is very common in photography too so when you're doing a photo say you're taking some photographs of say an old barn and instead of just putting it in the center you put it in your first or your third quadrant and let the rest of the environment balance the picture so you have one focal point that's off center there's my metallic gold and again that's creative inspiration yeah, I remember the name of the paint <laughs> oh and I get it from jerrysartorama.com I've been getting majority vast majority of my art supplies from them and um, free shipping on orders over $35 so I'm always spending over $35 or if I'm not, then I'll get a few things, so I have 35, but it's, and they have this huge assortment of art supplies for many, many, many types of disciplines of art. So I advise you to check it out, Jerry's Art Supply, or Jerry's art Arama, and they even have um, these free video uh, lessons uh, I think they're every week, once a week, or maybe even a couple times a week. They have a Facebook page, and a website, or an Instagram. In fact, um, I submitted an application for their um, ambassador program, which I will be starting once they ship me the supplies. So I will be helping promote supplies that I get for free in return for doing videos and reviewing, using and reviewing. Okay, so you guys have seen my work before, you know I really like adding texture to um, splatters in particular, or even just like I use the gold with the streaming, the gold on there. I like how splattering it's a nice contrast against what I perceive a lot of poor painting has almost an airbrushed look quality to it um, so I love um, the contrast of splattered solid paint splatters um, against some of the um, text textures of poor painting because you're not going to get that Oh, and I forgot to mention early in the video when I had my base coat of white down, I got a tip from another artist that I was watching their video, and I wish I could remember who it was, and I will try and remember who it was and put a credit for them in the comments. But they had mentioned they stopped using their torch, and I use a heat gun, same difference, you know, same results, on their base coat because it was setting the top a little, just a little bit, you know, starts to harden basically, before they even, you know, did their, their pour. And that affects the movement of the paint when you're tilting and when, when the paint spreads. And I was like, oh, I never even thought of that. And I thought it was a really good idea because you're going to be moving your paint around and you're going to be using your torch or your heat gun at some point. So you really don't need to worry about popping all the air bubbles in your base coat unless you have a specific reason for it other than just because you feel you have to but if you maybe you're doing a certain technique where it warrants that then that's fine but if you don't have to try it because then it keeps your base coat um, from starting to prematurely dry as you're tilting your paint oh yeah so right now I was trying to decide I wanted to add another element because everything's light 
very light except for a couple dark little segments in the painting and I, I wanted another dark element to kind of um, tie it all together. And there it is. But just that, yeah, yeah, that was my phthalo blue, which is another new color I got. I love that stuff. It's like the Viridian Green. It's this deep, lush color, and as you add water to it or um, white and it lightens up, it's got this beautiful, rich, kind of deep aqua quality about it beautiful so um, so yeah just by putting those delicate thin streaks of blue on there I felt it helped anchor the composition everything just was kind of a little disjointed and floating so um, so I just wanted a little bit and then what am I doing with Oh yeah, I wanted again just a little bit of dark. And I'm sticking with all the colors that are already in the painting at this point. There's some purple, yeah. Again, me and my textures. And when if you want to add some splattering type textures, you don't always have to cover like the whole painting with it. You tend to want to make certain sections or one section just more dense with texture. And either have just a little bit in another part of the painting kind of carry it over. And sometimes I just might throw texture over the whole painting, but it just depends on the color I'm using. But um, yeah, everything I just, like I said, I just, um, don't be afraid to experiment. I know sometimes it's a little nerve-wracking because you might have something that you really like and you're afraid if I start doing this or that, like when I took that it looked like a big palette knife, it's actually a big frosting uh, knife. I love it. You can get them in the, in the bakery section. But um, I was like, ah, oh, I'm just going to do it. So it's just really cool. The close-ups are always the best part, right? Well, especially for you guys because you're seeing it from afar while I'm sitting there with my reading glasses on and looking close, sitting back and looking close. <clears throat> but I definitely find poor art extremely addicting. And like I said, if you really hate something, or I shouldn't say hate, you're really unhappy with it, either I've rarely ever scraped the paint off. I usually just keep adding, or sometimes I've just completely covered it with other paint. Um, but I'd say most of the time I... If I don't like something and yeah uh, or I let it dry I just let it I walk away from it I'm like oh, I don't like this it's not salvageable so I've just let it like even the next day worked on it so it wasn't 100% dry but it was dry to the light touch and just it's so mesmerizing looking at all the cool textures that you get from poor painting fluid painting poor painting fluid poor painting poor fluid painting whatever you want to call it <clears throat> messy painting but it's always is I never get tired of seeing the effects that come up you're like oh that's pretty cool and how do I do that again oh, I don't know it's a it's a chemistry there's a lot of chemistry involved when you think about it there's a science to it and then you're tying your science with an art form so it's a scientific art form, which I think is really cool. So yeah, I was really happy with how it turned out. And I've been um, really like these vertical, or excuse me, these narrow long panels. I'm sorry, that's a 10 by 20. Huh, I meant to mention that earlier. So here's your little detail stills. But um, I like these panel shaped narrow canvases, and I actually like them um, vertical. 
I just think it's really neat looking to have these um, long panels. I mean, they look good at horizontal too, don't get me wrong, but, um, but I do really like that. Well, listen, thank you so much for watching my video. All my artwork is for sale. Um, I'm on Instagram at kcs.fineart <clears throat> and kcsfineart.com where you'll find most of my art for sale. And I'd like to thank you again for stopping by. I hope you enjoy the video. You all have a great day and God bless.